Uh, it would be really easy to say I'm fascinated with dangerous animals and leave it at that, but I don't think that's quite the most accurate representation of the truth. Um, what I'm fascinated by is being able to show people they're not as dangerous as they think. Um, especially with a lot of the tarantulas and scorpions in uh, the United States, they're, they're just not dangerous. Their venom doesn't really have the ability to, to mangle a person. And so, you know, I really like being able to show people, hey, you know, they're not that likely to sting you if you're not messing with them. And even if they do, it's not that big of a deal. So, I guess my fascination is more educating people about the, the actual risks of a lot of animals that are perceived as dangerous rather than uh, actually being fascinated with the fact they are dangerous. This is an Arizona bark scorpion, and it's actually a pretty cool little critter. Um, one thing that people kind of get mistaken about with uh, scorpions, this is not actually a tail. Um, it's, it's actually an extension of the body. So the scorpion actually poops out the end of it, and by definition, that makes it an extension of the body and not actually a tail. Uh, one kind of cool thing about scorpions, and this is true for a lot of bugs actually, they don't actually have moving parts to help them breathe. Um, she has, actually I think the boy has four pairs of, don't fall again, four pairs of book lungs, and they can hold perfectly still and still do a gas exchange and help the scorpion to breathe. So a uh, scorpion has passive respiration and something like a human has active respiration where we have to breathe in and, and actively move our, well, kind of move our lungs to breathe. Um, and then finally, another cool thing about scorpions is that they fluoresce under ultraviolet light. So this is an ultraviolet laser. You can see it turns that real cool bluish teal color. Now, um, Arizona bark scorpions are actually the most dangerous scorpion in the United States, and they've killed um, in the tens if not dozens of people over the history of people keeping track of it. Um, used to be that uh, I believe it was Arizona State University made the anti-venom for it, but then they stopped making it. So there's actually a period of, well, I don't know, around four or five years when you really could not legally get anti-venom. And uh, relatively recently, the FDA has approved a... Uh, anti-venom that's made in Mexico, but depending on where you get it from, what hospital and everything, um, it can be up to $12,000 a vial, and you usually need more than one vial if you need it, so it's very, very expensive. Uh, costs like $100 a vial in Mexico, by the way. Um, so, 
These are actually kind of an interesting combination of traits that make them kind of dangerous. Um, this is either a small adult, or it might need one more molt to reach its full adult size, but at any rate, they're really not very large. And they do have an interesting cocktail of neurotoxic components to their venom, so I really wouldn't be in any big risk uh, of dying if I got stung, been stung before. Um, it's more like babies, or like old people, or just kind of the less tough humans. And if I did get stung, um, the hospital I went to might not actually have the antivenom for it, because it's so expensive. So, kind of a combination of a small size lets them get into all kinds of cracks and crevices uh, with a potent venom that has no toxic components and then a uh, lack of readily available affordable anti-venom overall makes them kind of a little bit dangerous.